Well, rumours are swirling about a former AFL champion running for the Liberal Party for the Victorian state election next year. I can reveal now who that is. And let me tell you, he'd make a formidable candidate with exactly the sort of X factor Michael O'Brien and the Liberals desperately need if they're going to end Daniel Andrews' grip on power. That man joins me now. Paul Dimitina, how strongly are you considering a run at state politics? Oh, I can reveal I have been approached and I'm contemplating there's obviously a lot to weigh up between family, business and everything else, but um, I, am, I am seriously contemplating it. Give me the sense of, even just as this rumour's been out in Melbourne over the last couple of days, people didn't know who it is, maybe some people put two and two together like I did. Have you had anyone signal support? I've had the phones yeah, rung hot today and there's been a lot of people, um, the, the support's been overwhelming. So it's probably maybe given me that little bit of a impetus again to, as I said, seriously consider it. And you know, I generally believe I could bring something to the table and hopefully make this state mm. what it should be again, a, a, a fabulous, you know, great state. Not like we are now, not like a, some of the broken things I see in our city. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, I, I'm, I'm not always a fan of the, the celebrity candidate, right? Um, and, and you're a footy star of the years past. But that's not what people see you as now. They see you as someone who's run a small business um, who was pretty vocal when Victorians felt like they didn't have much of a voice out there last year. Um, what could you bring to, to Spring Street that they don't have now? Oh, as you said, I've got that business acumen. I think I know, how, you know what it takes to put a business together and run that week in, week out keep your staff happy, keep them motivated, keep them energised. Um, there's a few little things that I believe I can add. And as I said, you know, you just got to look around. Um, as a proud Victorian and proud Melbourneian, you just have to go down, you know, Victoria Street, Richmond, to see what's turned into, it's horrible now, mm. vacant tenancy after vacant tenancy. There's an injecting room that got open there and there's got to be better ways of doing that as well. They have decimated a once great street, the multicultural, the you know, the vibrant aspect mm. of... Victoria Street's been crushed. Now, if they're going to open up an injecting room in the CBD, come on, our CBD has got to be a showcase, it's got to be the centrepiece of Melbourne, and that's just not the way to go about it. So, um, you know, I'd love to bring... I have passion, I have energy, I have enthusiasm. I think some of that could rub off and help build this state to be great again. I think Victorians, regardless of their politics now, are really flat about what the future looks like. I think people in Melbourne, again, regardless of their politics in the past, um, I feel like there's a real lack of hope. And I think today with, with lockdown number five, it's tough. Absolutely. It just, I mean, obviously it causes anxiety and stress and everything that goes with it. It's also your staff again that have to go through it again and work out how they're going to survive for another five days without any income coming in with it. You know, um, as I said, we'll do what we can as a business to support our staff. And I know a lot of other mm. businesses out there are doing everything they can to keep their staff happy uh, employed and um, giving them hope, mm. and sometimes that hope just keeps getting crushed. Uh, we can't just keep this roller coaster of emotion and roller coaster of open shut, open shut, because um, eventually we're going to close this state down for business for good. Because I've already seen the attrition rate, and people just have to walk around your main street wherever you live. Go down your high street, look at Clarendon Street, South Melbourne, decimated, vacant tenancy, vacant tenancy. It's a ghost town, the CBD. When you walk through that some nights, it's it's horrible. It's deplorable what's actually happened. And um, as I said, I'm a proud, passionate Victorian, and we need to get this state moving again. And we need, you know, we need people giving people hope out there. As much as um, you know, yes, I've always been a Liberal voter, but mm. I'm also very blue collar. I'm a, I'm a hard worker and I've always, that's what I did on the football field. I was, you know, it's probably a bit of a scrubber the way I played, but mm. I, I made it just by sheer hard work and a will to win and a will to make myself better. And it's what I try to do in my business. And that's what I believe I could also potentially add. I, I think, you know, I spent my life analysing um, politics and, and the media. I think that's probably why you cut through last year, because you were real. Right, and Victorians were hurting, and they wanted someone to thump the table and, and, and say to government, "This is not good enough. We, we can't cope like this." And I know a lot of businesses felt like that. They certainly would tell that to me on the phone, um, but they were scared to go on camera. They were scared to do media because the retribution from the Andrews government, the unions, and Labor in Victoria, is pretty strong for business, isn't it? It is. I mean, some people, yeah, they don't like being shot down. I'm lucky I'm not on social media. I couldn't care what people think of me. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. 
I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I really don't. I really don't care what people think about me. Um, and whereas a lot of other people do, they really worry about what the left or what the do good is. And you know what? I've got a social conscience. I care about people's lives. I care, but also care about the mental health and well-being of not only my staff, it's mm. your family and, and the wider community. Um, and I thought the whole mandate was to make sure we protect the elderly and the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, I've been vaccinated. What's the point of having a vaccination if I have to go back into lockdown again? You know, there's just, uh, it's disappointing. It's just disappointing the, the way a lot of things have been done. And I think there's probably a better way of doing it. Um, mm. And as I said, now what if I'm going to open my big mouth and that's why I'm contemplating going into politics because, you know... Um, you want to make a difference. No use, but yeah, make a difference. Not just if you're going to be outspoken, you know, put your, you know, put your mouth and everything else where... Um, you know, put my, my, myself on the line and, and, and do it. So as I said, I am seriously weighing it up and um, and I'm you know probably potentially looking at Albert Park. Um, Hang on, Albert Park is um, the Health Minister, Martin Foley. And I mean, I think Martin Foley could string a sentence together. Martin Foley is part of the reason we're in this mess, but um, that's Martin Foley's seat. That's, that's a real yeah. fight. You know what, Josh Burns, our federal Labor MP has rung me, reached out a couple of times. He's been to the pub, shown some support. Um, lovely fella and he's got a bit of empathy um i've known martin for about 15 years you think he's picked up the phone once to ring me to check in to check how his business or check how the community around us is no so really not at all so i just you. don't think i really genuinely don't care sometimes that our government don't think our government cares about small business or the business world we employ people we want people to have a job we you know yes i'm a liberal person but there's a part of me that you're late because you're hiring people, you're looking after your staff. And as I said, it's just disappointing that you've got a health minister that, you know, and I've got my health issues. You think he's reached out once, rung me up? Our kids went to Elwood Primary, part of the St Kilda City Junior Football Club. Not once have I heard from the man. To say I'm disappointed, and that's one of the reasons, probably a bit of a driving factor as to potentially taking him on. I just think that's, you know, I've got empathy, I've got compassion. I don't think Martin does. I tell you, if Martin follows what you're right now, he wouldn't have liked it. Any, any of that, not not what you said, but but your just capacity, I think, to pick up those issues and 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 take on someone like Foley head on. I mean, that that's what's missing in state politics. You find it occasionally in federal politics, but but state politics has been missing real passion. Um, it's tough on your family politics. We've had a pretty tough five lockdown couple of years. Is your family up for it? That's what I've got to weigh up and go through. And, you know, there's, there's a fair bit to digest there. So, as I said, it's um, there's a lot to go through and just weighing all that up right now. And as I said, I've had my health issues, so I just want to make sure I don't slip into sort of backward yeah. with some of the issues I've had. So, um, yeah, that's it's, a, it's another discussion that'll be out there. All right. Well, there's one proud Victorian to another. I know you've got to weigh it all up, but, by God, I hope you do it. Paul DiMatina. Thanks, Peter.